at Dog Lassiter. Feel free to call, no matter what your beef may be. However, it's only fair to warn you that Mr. Lassiter has been known to make hamburger out of sacred cows. And now, here he is, Bob Lassiter. for the hour of 8 o'clock, a very, very good Wednesday evening to you. May the 13th, 1987, Lassiter with you until 11, as I am every weekday, right here at News Talk 57 WPLP. Let me, uh, let me get this out of the way. I've got some business here that I'd like to take care of immediately. A special weather statement has been issued by the National Weather Service for the Tampa Bay area. It includes Pasco, Hillsboro, Manatee, Sarasota, Highlands, DeSoto, Charlotte, and Lee counties. People in those counties should be alert for periods of very heavy rain, along with strong and gusty surface winds and possible hail. For about the next hour or so, as a north-south line of very heavy thunderstorms will drift very slowly westwards towards the Gulf Coast from the eastern portions of Hillsboro, Manatee, and Sarasota counties. Occasional funnel clouds can be associated with these storms. Obviously. If you see one, you know, take care, okay? All right. We have three hours between us tonight. Three hours just between you and me. I'll even give you the phone numbers to get things underway. Hillsboro, 224-0057. Pinellas, 393-0057. I have some random thoughts to toss in your direction tonight. You can do whatever you want with them. They're nothing but random thoughts. I've been watching, of course, the iran Contragate hearings. I know that for the most part you haven't. That's, that's okay. Don't feel bad about it. You know, don't feel bad about it. It's, it's, it's all right. I understand. You'll get into it a little bit more as the, as the names get bigger and the gossip gets juicier. But I've, I've come away absolutely confused. And maybe for the one or two of you out there who have watched this, you can help me out on this one because I'm not sure if I have it right. So, so let me see if I've got this right here. Our beloved leader, Ronald Wilson Reagan, ordered his guys to do what could not legally be done, i.e. aid the Contras. But our beloved big guy, Ronald Wilson Reagan, is not guilty of any wrongdoing since he apparently also told his guys not to do anything illegal. Well, I guess that clears up the whole mess. In any event, hey, oh, weren't you proud of Congressman Connie Mack today there on the national television just ripping the you-know-what out of Ben Linder's mother? Well, I'm sorry, Mrs. Linder, but, you know, he was a commie pinko slob pig. He deserved to die at the hands of the Contras. Oh, that was just great. Just love that. Hey, great going there, Congressman. Great going there. Why can you not... Why can you not... Get decent house plants around here. I don't understand. I mean, I lived in Pittsburgh in the dead of winter. You'd go to the store, there'd be fantastic, really great, neat house plants, but around here, and I thought this is where they came from. I don't understand. Ah, uh, would everybody please say, ah? Uh, poor Pat Robertson. The 700 Club, their their monies are off by a third in the month of April. I mean, the man's the man's almost apoplectic. Oh my goodness! And there he is for what the third day in a row this week on the show that he only appears on once a week, begging and pleading, the tears running down his cheeks. Oh, you know, my God! If you if if, if you've ever listened to this program, he says, you know, things like that. If you've ever listened to this program and you've been healed of of slime or whatever it is that's been troubling you, send me fifteen dollars a month for the next seven months, and everything will be fine and hunky dory. And oh, I mean, I, I we just have so many projects here. We got unwed mothers running around the place, and we've got oh bums that we're taking care of. And, and people that were helping to read and we just we need this money desperately of course he makes no mention whatsoever of the vast amounts of money that he spends to fund right-wing organizations 
to set them up and fund them. He makes no mention of that at all. He needs your money to help all of those unwed mothers, and oh, my God, it's terrible. Well, gee, Pat, maybe if you'd cut back on some of your right-wing political activities, you'd have money to help out those unwed mothers. I just feel so sorry for him. Oh, poor Pat. I wonder why he is on that show almost daily when he said he was only going to be on once a week. <laughs> well, you know, details, details, details. I got to thinking this morning. I got to thinking about something I don't think about very often. That I hardly ever think about. What was that? Oh, well, probably nothing. Cuban interference, no doubt. Major League Baseball in St. Petersburg. Now, I mean, you know, I, I was really in a bad way this morning. It, it, it got so bad, I got to thinking about Major League Baseball in St. Petersburg. And so many times during the last year or so, well, so many times, what, two, three times, some poor misguided soul will call up on the show and say something about, Hey, Bob, what do you think about Major League Baseball in St. Petersburg? Think we'll ever get it? And I, I give him some, you know, cockamamie mamie excuse and go on to the next call. But it suddenly dawned on me today why we won't ever see Major League Baseball in St. Petersburg. I don't care how nice the stadium is. I, I couldn't care less about the television market. There's a very good reason. You know, it has nothing to do with the fact that there's something like 700 miles of streets in St. Petersburg without sidewalks. It has nothing to do with the fact that there isn't any real downtown and what they jokingly refer to as downtown, you know, there's just nobody there. It has nothing to do with all of that. It has nothing to do with no major hotels in the area. It has nothing whatsoever to do with all of that. It has to do with the St. Petersburg Times. Now, here is a newspaper that supposedly is very, very pro-stadium, pro-pro-baseball, pro-St. Petersburg. You open up the newspaper and you turn to the sports section and you've got to go to the third page of the sports section before you find any baseball news. And the only baseball news you find is what they can cram onto that page. Because if, the, if there's too much, then they just leave it out. I mean, for example, yesterday's top story, the front page of the sports section of the St. Petersburg Times. Are you listening down there, boys? Well, on the front page of the St. Petersburg Times, the top sports story in a border with pictures and arrows and diagrams. It was just great, beautiful, beautiful graphics. You guys got great graphics down there. The top sports story was that Highlight is slipping in Spain. That was the top sports story in the St. Petersburg Times. Yeah, guys, Major League Baseball's just around the corner. Just around the corner. What do you suppose is the hardest job in the whole wide world? Think about that for a second. I'll wait. I'll bet you don't know, do you? And yet it is so obvious. It is so painfully obvious. The hardest job in the whole wide world. It's got to be. It's got to be waiting on tables. And I say that because so few have been able to master the profession. We go out one, two, three nights a week. Rarely anything terribly lavish. Usually to a tavern for a light dinner because we don't have that much time. Okay. Tonight we went out as per usual. Finally, you know, get a waitress to come over to the table. You know, oh my God, you're bothering us. Oh, geez, what are you here for? Oh my God, and you want me, you want me to you, what? You want me to bring you food and beverage? Oh God, comes over to the table. Says, would you like to see me? This is you know like 4:30, quarter to five. Okay, 4:30, quarter to five this afternoon. Hot as Hades outside. Tongues dragging, laying on the table at a tavern says, would you like to see a menu? And uh, my wife said, yeah, sure. Just as I was about to give her my drink order, but bam, off she went. Comes back with a menu, puts it down in front of Mary, immediately does a 180, walks away over to another table of people who had come in after us and took their order. And this just goes on and on and on. So it's got to be the toughest job in the world. Waiting on tables must be the toughest job in the world because virtually no one, especially in the Tampa Bay area, has mastered it. Every time I go out to eat, it is another horror story. 
Oh, there's this one place. I should mention them by name, but I won't. It's a little restaurant in a shopping center. Not far from the station. Little restaurant, nice little place, or at least it used to be. Every week it gets worse. They have this one bimbo that you would not believe. I mean, first of all, the woman is so big I can't... No, it's not that one, Michael. The woman is so big I can't begin to imagine how she gets into jeans. Everybody in the place wears jeans and, and flowered shirts and, and little Cuban hats. And I can't begin to... I mean, I... I oh. I could easily get into her jeans with room enough for, you know, four or five people from here at the station. I mean, this woman is... Whoa! But that's not the real problem. She's dumb, too. She's one of the worst waitresses I have ever encountered in my entire life. Well, anyway, this bimbo, and that's really the word for her. I'm not, girls, I'm not really being derogatory. This woman is a bimbo, and you'd call her a bimbo, too, if you had the displeasure of being waited on by her. Oh, this bimbo who doesn't know how to serve, has no idea what it's all about, loves tips. Well, there's also another problem. And if, if you go out to, to eat or to, to get a little libation somewhere in the neighborhood of 5 to 6 o'clock, you will notice that many of the restaurants in the area have come up with this brilliant scheme to hit you for a double tip. And that is they change shifts somewhere in the neighborhood of 5 to 6 o'clock. And the waitress will come over to you and say, well, I'm so sorry, but I'm cashing out. Would you mind paying your bill? And almost every single time, they'll get me for a double tip because I will also leave a tip for the new girl who probably only brought one round of drinks to us. But nonetheless, I feel, you know, uh, well, you know, I took up her table a whole bit, so I'll leave some money in. So, bam, they get me for a double tip. Well, this bimbo comes up and lays that line on us. And the service had been atrocious. The entire meal virtually ruined because, I mean, for example, if you served somebody a cheeseburger, would you be surprised if they asked for some ketchup? I mean, would that really surprise you? If, if, if they wanted some ketchup with a cheeseburger? Surprise the hell out of this woman. Well, in any event, she comes over after destroying the meal and says, Well, I have to cash out now. Excuse me, it was really a little bit more like, Well, I have to cash out now. And so I said, great, you know, give me the check. That check was like $15, $16. I don't know what it was. Something in that neighborhood. I gave her a 20 I got $3 and change back. And she just put it down on the table. And so I just left it on the table, and we continued our conversation. She comes back like about maybe five minutes later and says, I'll be leaving soon. I said, great, have a nice night. We continued our conversation. I can see her out of the corner of my eye, lurking in the in the far end of the restaurant, her eyes glued to our table. Just absolutely glued to them. And this goes on and on and on, and she's just standing there watching our table. And I know what's going on, but I feel like being mean. I really felt this woman, you know, just doesn't deserve it. I'm going to be mean. And so I just continued the conversation. And so she came back over to the table and she said, Marge will be your new waitress, or whatever the woman's name was. And I said, great, great. So if you want anything further, Marge will get it for you. Hey, fine. Thanks, Bimbo. Get out of here. Get lost. Go away. I'm not making any of this up. And we probably even stayed at the restaurant longer than we would have just to torment this woman who had already destroyed our meal. So finally, about another five, ten minutes goes by. And now we're talking something in the neighborhood of 35, 40 minutes total from the initial, Well, I have to cash out now. And she comes back over to the table. We look up at her and she says, Can I get you anything else? And so, yeah, I said, bring us two more beers. And so she waddles away, comes thundering back with two beers puts them down on the table and says, that'll be $2.60, whatever it was. And so there's this $3 in silver laying on the table. And so I push it over towards her. The next thing I noticed, it was all gone. It was about a dollar over what the two beers were. Roughly a dollar. This bimbo stole my dollar. And then, finally went home. Actually, it would have been cheap at twice the price. To join in the conversation, the number to call in Hillsborough County... Oh. Four 
minutes after the hour of 8 o'clock. Now, I know, I know that when I go off on a tangent about eating out in restaurants that I just lose my audience altogether because I know that this audience can't relate to that. This is an audience that, well, basically it's at Morrison's Cafeteria and the Jack in the Box. They don't have waiters and waitresses at these places. And I, 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 I realize, it's kind of like when I come in and I talk about my, my, my goose feather quilt. Just goes over people's heads. I understand that. But there is one thing that I really did want to talk to you about tonight, and I'll tell you why in a moment. About maybe a month and a half, two months ago, I got a call. And the person said to me, We sit here at home trying to visualize what you look like. Do you ever do that with your callers? And I answered honestly at the time. I said, No, I don't. Oh. My life has been hell ever since that night. Because ever since that night, I have tried to visualize not just my callers, but everybody else's callers. I just cannot get it out of my mind. I mean, I can't get it out of my mind. I sit here night after night listening to these voices on the show, and for the most part, I see them there in, in undershirts and boxer shorts, drinking cheap beer that they bought on special at the Publix eating pork rinds out of the bag. Basically what I see, at least for the men. The women, obviously, open-toed wedgies with reinforced toes and their pantyhose, rollers in their hair, floral print house dresses. But it goes deeper than that. I've started now to visualize other hosts' callers. I mean, I turn on a Fowler show, and basically I see people in overalls, men and women, overalls, across the board, some with shoes, some without. I turn on Eastman's show. I see people in Nehru jackets and old granny dresses. I turn on Wheeler's show. I see people with bowlers and handlebar mustaches and women in babushkas. I turn on Cole's show, and I, I see old men in, in military uniforms. You know, those silly hats, the Commodore hats with a fringe on them, things like that. I see the women who have seams on the back of their stockings and dresses with, with shoulder pads in them. And they all look like Joan Crawford did 40 years ago. And I thought, you know, this is, this is a way around something. See, we, we've, got, we've got this little prohibition here at the radio station. It makes management really, really, really touchy when you knock another host. Well, I've been beating my head against the wall trying to figure out a way around that. And guess what? I have. I have. I've done it. I've done it. I've done it. I can't wait to see the memo tomorrow. Please do not knock other show hosts' callers. So I thought one of the things that we might be able to do tonight, because I know you guys like to get down in the mud and wrestle and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Tell me how you visualize, you know, callers to Fowler's show, callers to this show, callers to Eastman's, Wheeler's, Coles. I don't care. It makes no difference to me. You know, pick or choose, go through the whole lot. Because that's, in essence, what I see when I, when I hear these people. Especially the men in the military uniforms with the fringe. be a great way around it. Great way around it. 28 minutes after the hour of 8 o'clock. Well enough for me. Here it is a full moon night. My goodness, I haven't even taken a call yet. So I'll give you the telephone numbers and we'll get down to business. Hillsboro, 224-0057. Pinellas, 393-0057. St. Pete, hi, you're on here at WPLP. Hi. Hi. Uh, let's see. You're talking about waitresses and waiters in restaurants? Exactly. Got to be the, the hardest job in the world because virtually no one at all has mastered it. Well, I... I mean, I remember that commercial that was running a couple of weeks back or a couple of months back? Uh, this, this snooty old woman who goes to this uh, expensive restaurant and she's talking about the waiter. There he is, smoothing out invisible creases on the tablecloth. Give me a break. Not in Tampa Bay. Uh, well, I don't. I didn't see the commercial because I don't watch TV. I listen to the radio. <laughs> well, it was a radio commercial. It was terrible. Terrible. Oh, okay. Uh, what I wanted to say nice is... Nice restaurant. Bad commercial. I went to a restaurant on my birthday with a couple who's a friend of mine, and I told them, I said, please don't say that it's my birthday. I don't want this happy birthday embarrassment, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm here all by myself, but I don't want to feel stupid. And so after our meal, the waiter comes out with this little cake, and he's like, happy birthday to you, and I'm like, I'm going to kill you guys to my friends. 
And uh, the waiter, a few minutes later, they're going, my friends are saying, we didn't do it. And the waiter comes back and he goes, I'm sorry, I hope you don't mind. And I thought that was a very nice thing for him to do. And other than that, it was also excellent service, you know? Oh, okay. So you got, you know, one of the three people in town who knows how to do it. I, do you eat out very often? Yes, I do. I eat out all the time. I never cook at home. And, and I do agree with you. I was getting a big kick out of the stuff you were saying, especially about the fat lady waitress hanging around oh, for a tip. And it's true. I mean, I didn't exaggerate an iota. This is something that went on for over 40 minutes for a dollar that she ended up stealing. I, I believe it. I, I go to this one place frequently, and, uh, the, like, I go there and have a drink, and a drinks are two twenty. And I'll lay down five dollars, and I, you know they don't have the same help anymore. This was like last year, and you know you lay down five dollars for your two twenty-five drink, and then before you know it, there's no change, and you're like, hey, I didn't mean for you to keep the whole rest of that for a tip. Oh, you know. Oh, surprise, surprise. Gee, everybody else does. I mean, everybody leaves me, you know, twice the price. Yeah, and the, and the place right now is uh, going out of business because <laughs> they lost a lot of business when they, you know, had people there working there. Oh, when I'm sitting at a bar, there is no way I will leave money on the bar or pay drink by drink by drink. If they won't run a tab for me, I get up and leave. Right. Well, this place, you know, it's like, just one drink, okay, $5, here you go. And then it's like, uh, where's my change? Oh, Oh, okay. <laughs> well, the thing, the thing that was blowing me away is the, the, the total bill was like 15 or $16. So even a generous 20% tip would have only been 3 bucks. Uh-huh. And how desperate this woman must be for the lousy $3 to stand there in the corner for 40 minutes. That's true. I mean, I've, when I was younger, I worked in restaurants. Uh-huh. And I know a lot of people that work in restaurants. And usually in a situation like that, the, the person who takes over the party for you will take the tip and give it to you tomorrow. Right. I mean, give me a break. You don't have to stand there like a leech. <laughs> I bet you had fun, though, huh? <laughs> well, I did, but the problem is we go in there frequently, and every time we go in and now see this bimbo, I, we sit at the table trembling. Oh, please, God, not us, not us. No, please. So far, we haven't had her again. <laughs> That's good. Whew. I thank you much. Uh-huh, thank you. Be Bye-bye. good. Tampa 224-0057, Pinellas 393-0057. Oh. St. Pete, hi, you're on air to WPLP. Hello, St. Petersburg. Yeah? Mm, yes. Uh, this is me. This, this is you. Well, I, I kind of hoped it would be. Hello, Bob. Hello. I haven't, uh, I've been listening to you for uh, a little while, you know, right? Uh-huh. Well, I want to know uh, what the hell is wrong with you, right? What in the hell is wrong with me? Yeah, you, you seem so nice uh, on some subjects, and and then when uh, somebody um, talks to you about things, you you just don't want to answer them or anything like that, you know, right? Eh? I have the biggest idea what you're talking about. Well, I listen to you, and you get so excited, you know, right? Mm-hmm. I can't remember what goes on, you know, right? But no, um, not dumb I don't mind about that. Why you can't all answer does these kill people? Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, I mean, talk shows are talk shows, you know, right? Mm-hmm. And you're supposed to have patience with them, you know, right? I beg your pardon. You're supposed to have patience. Where Where does it say that? I'm supposed to do whatever the hell I want to do. You're not supposed to do what the hell you want to. You, I mean, uh, only for those you, do you own the station, the lady. Do you, you own, own the show? Do you own the station, lady? Never mind about the station. You're supposed to do your thing, right? I and do my nice thing, and right? People. I do my thing better than anybody else does his thing, according to the ratings. You used to do, but now you get nuts. Well, perhaps I've talked to one too many drunken old fools, you know what I mean? Well, maybe you're drunk, but I'm not. Oh, Uh -uh. I see. I think you better straighten up, you know, right? If you want to keep on the show. Oh, really? Yes. Huh. I'll wait a minute. Well, that really has me scared. Well, maybe you're not scared, you know, right? I mean, I'm really, I'm sitting here trembling because well, you don't you, like the way I conduct be, you should my be, show. You, you should be better, uh, better to your people that listen to you, you know, right? Mm-hmm. I got so bored, and really? I had to phone you tonight. Oh, yeah. You got so bored, you had to phone me tonight? Yeah, you used to be very good. Uh-huh. I'm getting so sick and tired of you. Oh, yeah. pity poo. 
You're breaking yeah. my heart, sweetheart. Well, you already lost the money. You can. Yeah, why don't you give me the raspberry, right? Okay. Uh, what, what was that again? Could you possibly, you know, try why to not you slur your words? The raspberry, right? You either. You, you would like me to give you the raspberries? Yes. You okay. either want the phone. <laughs> I always try to help. Tampa, you're on the air, WPLP. Yes, I'm a restaurant manager. Yes. And my restaurant managers are very, 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 very good workers for me. They they, they make, uh, I'd say, uh, hundreds of dollars per night. Mm-hmm. And uh, you're, knocking, uh, you're knocking my business. Mm-hmm, that's true. I'm knocking your business. But right on down from Scotty Lovenus to Mr. Ryan Freddy, they have raked in many, many dollars. Uh-huh. And I just want to tell you that your show is beginning to stink a little bit. Really? It's got a uh, terrible aroma coming my way. Really? And uh, Mr. Mr. Ryan Freddy and Scotty Lovenus will not be happy to hear. Oh, my. And that is right now. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. For what? There he goes. St. Petersburg. Hi, you're on there, WPLP. Hello, Bob. Hello. Bob, uh, at the beginning of the program, you mentioned something about uh, Connie Mack. Mm hmm. I want to tell you this Connie Mack is a classic example of a high-grade moron that can be elected to office because of his name. The pride of Lee County? <laughs> yeah, you know, for God's sake. You know, here, here's this, this, this poor uh, couple. They lost their son. Mm -hmm. At the hands of American-paid mercenaries. Right. And he says uh, he had it coming. Mm -hmm. Had it coming? Yeah. An American who went to a country with whom we have diplomatic relations yeah. was doing humanitarian work, but he had it coming. You know, uh, this guy, uh, you know, he, he doesn't get elected because uh, uh, he has anything up uh, upstairs. He gets elected because he spouts the uh, Reagan party line and... Uh, and he and clings to it, you know, in, in a uh, in an area where the Reagan is uh, popular. That was a despicable son, absolutely despicable, and speaks a great deal for Mr. Mack. Although I'm sure that his constituency down there in Fort Myers and the rest of you know the great Lee County area will be just thrilled with it, just absolutely thrilled. He'll probably be elected with a much larger majority the next time around. Well, they might hold a special election next week just to give him a big mandate. Yeah, well, if he if he reflects. Uh, his constituents, he can have them. He reflects them. I thank you much. Okay, Bob. Be good. good night. The phone numbers that put you on the air. That's not good enough for J and M aluminum. They also have a lot of old aluminum. I mean. On the time, Apollo Beach. Hi, you're on here, WPLP. Yeah, how you doing, Robert? Fine. Before I get into the subject, I'd like to talk about the... I recognize the voice of the restaurant uh, manager that called you about the stinking aroma. Oh, you're talking about Sean? Yeah, well, okay. see, he's playing it on the station. I live about a block from that place, and um, when the wind's just right, you talk about a stinking aroma. Phew. Bad. Really bad. Now, uh, about St. Pete baseball team. Oh, ah, yes, yes. It, it's not the, uh, it's not the uh, St. Pete time that's the problem over there. The problem lies in the fact that baseball teams, it's a, it's a, it's a fact that baseball teams uh, survive on money that is paid by season tickets. And the problem in St. Pete is that the people are so old that they'll, you know, they'll just die before the season's over. And well, baseball teams survive on a lot of things, including tele television contracts, which just really aren't available around here because the market's not that big. Season tickets, as you pointed out, major source of revenue, especially through the winter. Yeah. And they also survive on a 
a populace that is into the game. And when the St. Petersburg Times doesn't put their baseball news until the third page, that sends a real clear message to Mr. Uberoff and all of the other owners. Real clear message. Most of the folks in St. Pete hardly, you know, can hardly get turned to the third page because, as I said, they don't buy the season tickets because they don't live through the season, you know, and that creates a real problem. Well, I, see, I guess for some of them it does. Well, they could will them, though. I, I want you to just close your eyes and visualize a, a, a man standing with one hand in his tunic. The other arm is is off. It's just an empty sleeve. Uh -huh. and he's standing there with a, one of these big uh, Admiral hats on. Mm -hmm. uh, that That's a kind of a typical person that calls Mr. Cole in my mind. That's exactly well, that's what you're visualizing. That's what I'm visualizing, yes. And the women, I see them in fatigues ministered into the wounded. I see a lot of men in double-breasted suits, too. You do? Yeah, I do. Yeah. With and fedoras. Before I let you go, there's one other thing. I got really disturbed with our United States Army today. Uh, the recruiting office, I went down. I, I saw this commercial on television where these young kids are in this tank and they and they and they turn their all their computers and all on and blow up another tank and they all jump up and down. Uh huh. And they said, Boy, you know, the army is a, is really the place to be. I mean, what an exciting career. But they said I was I mean, I got so excited I wanted to invade Granada or something, but they turned me down, said I was too old. But that really makes a fella want to enlist. I mean, you know, because that's, 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 there's nothing I'd rather do than get inside it. Oh, I know what you're talking about. I watch those commercials. My heart starts to beat, and it's, it's, yeah. all, it's all the wife can do is to hold me down. I can understand because you can think of the money that our government is spending on that. And, I mean, you know, that's... that's well, you, don't have to keep, you don't have to keep feeding those tanks quarters either. No, you don't. And, they, and uh, those Bradleys and all those that, those that think and all, it's, it's really a great, great... I love those commercials, but as I said, they, they you know, just turn a fella down. I mean, have you ever seen the kind of people that hang around those video arcades uh, where you, you have to go to play those kind of games. Uh, it's so much better to go into the Army. You don't have to put up that rip rat. You got that right. That's, That's right. for sure. Okay, Bob. Thank Bye -bye. you much. Line open in Hillsborough, 224-0057. Largo, hi. You're on the air at WPLP. Yeah, Bob. Yeah. Uh, I've been listening to those Iran-Contra affairs. Uh-huh. And... Um, so you're the other one. <laughs> And uh, in 1985, and if I'm right, um, well, no, let's see, December 85 was the end of the Boland Amendment, right? Mm-hmm. I think you're right. Okay. And uh, there were supposed to have been 100 tow missiles for release on the 16th or 17th of July. Um, and the Secretary of State um, made a proposal and a response that uh, about the risk that uh, that might take place and McFarland said that uh, he what well, somehow or the other McFarland took charge of this and he went and he talked to the Iranians and uh, the president said to strengthen Iran forces was not outrageous but could not deal in this kind of an arrangement and then sometime between July 21st and the 8th of August 1985, the meetings and the, re the residence with the president and the vice president and the secretary of state and defense and McFarlane and Poindexter, they had another conversation that said uh, they were not opposed to providing arms to people opposing the Ayatollah Khomeini policy of terrorism. And then somehow or another, they got a hold of this guy named Kemke, uh, uh, who McFarlane, uh, Mc, uh, Kemke, I think, is from, well, Kemke is from Israel. And uh, they got involved in uh, able to sell the weapons to Iran uh, by replacements and uh, to buy replacements in the U.S. You know, they had a, a thing about that, whether or not it could be done. Mm -hmm. And then they said they would allow one hostage to go free. Mm -hmm. You know all that, right? Yep. Uh-huh. Well, anyway, the president, uh, the president is involved here. Well, of course, we have a man who we are now told ordered his guys to do what could not legally be done, but told them not to do anything that was illegal. And that's his defense. Well, yeah, I, you know, help I, the Contras, but don't do anything illegal. Do whatever you have to do to help them, but don't do anything illegal. And don't tell me about it. And that's his defense. Give me a break. Give me a break, really. I thank you much. 
Um, oh, listen, I have a, a thing that on uh, on uh, teenage pr- uh, promiscuity. Uh huh. On what I think would be good for for uh, for teenagers and uh, uh, I, it's like a public school program for teenagers, but I think they should start at age ten. I think kids should start learning about sex sex at age 10, you know, from the ground up, like such things as uh, uh, health and grooming, uh, that kind of primary education for fifth and sixth graders. And then when they get to junior high school, I think that uh, they could be started with uh, knowledge of uh, the pill and uh, sexual, uh, homosexuals and abortions and uh, sexual contact and fam- family planning. And then by maybe the 10th through the 12th, 10th through the 12th, they could have like a, a co-ed thing. Separate them, separate the girls and the boys till they get to like the 10th grade. And then by the 10th grade, you could, could like a co-ed counseling classes for, for, for the kids. And then the program could be designed for confidence and security and sexual relations. And, you know, they could have like uh, shows with Dr. Ruth or with, you know, they could even get as vulgar as Howard just or somebody like that, you know, in these classes from 10 to 12. And then I think that uh, maybe they should give each student a card, uh, the girls a card after the seventh grade <laughs> that would state that uh, they had completed these courses from uh, fifth grade to the seventh grade and give them a card that would allow them to get uh, birth control and the guys uh, allow them to get birth control uh at these clinics, at public school clinics and health departments and things like this. And then, you know, you could you could just go on and on with it. There's, there's so much you could do if you were just willing to trust uh, 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 your morals, you know, of bringing up your child and, and the moral guidelines and trust them to make, the children to make the, the right decisions, you know, on sexuality and and not, you know, not uh, not so, you know, slap them on the hand or, or be slapped in the face with all the politics all the time you know i think that uh that this would be a good idea okay okay all right Um, (laughs) take care (laughs) it's nice to hear from tim cole's mother calling in okay you know earlier um mr max uh conduct there is kind of very questionable although he probably gets a lot of votes from the dfw and uh you know the condo commandos down in fort myers Oh, Fort Myers is just such a delightful place to be, I, I, I swear. You know, Great place for old Nazis to uh, hide out. I'm surprised the, old, uh, the guy's mother didn't haul off and smack him once. I mean, you know. I'm, so I'm surprised that, you know, some of the other congressmen seated at the table didn't get up and smack him once. Just the absolute height of poor taste. The absolute height of poor taste. I mean, from it there, I thought the guy was transplanted from Orange County instead of from uh, Lee County. But maybe they're the same. Well, uh, you know, Lee County is filled with all of the people who thought that Orange County was a little bit too pink. That, that's where they all move. When they when they can't take the liberalism in Orange County anymore, they all move to, to Lee County. Is that, the, uh, is that the Airstream capital of the South, Bob? Yes, I think it is. Amazing. Only place in the world I know of where Coles is considered a leftist. Good night, Bob. Good night. Tampa, you're on the air at WPLP. Hello. Hello. Bob, will you please explain to me what this business of uh, Connie Mack is all about. I have been so knee-deep in Iran-Contra hearings and CTL business and all this other stuff that I've read- I'm reading in the paper that I haven't read about it, and I don't know what you're talking about. Well, in a nutshell, what it was is that the parents of Benjamin Linder were testifying before a House committee today, and Connie Mack ripped into the parents of uh, Benjamin Linder and said, you know, hey, uh, tough luck. You didn't belong there anyway. You had no right to be there, so don't come here crying to me. Where was he? In Washington. Oh, I I don't mean that. I mean, where was this Benjamin Linder? You know where he was. Don't play games with me. Huh? You know where he was. Don't play games with me. No, really, I mean it. Well, it's only been front page news, you know, uh, Nicaragua. Oh, okay. Now I'm with you. Okay. So they were having a trial in, um, they were having a hearing in Washington? I believe that's what I said, yeah. Uh Uh-huh. 
Okay. Well, I've, all I've done all day long is watch the Iran-Contra hearings, and all I, that's all I've done for two weeks. So um, I just didn't know what you were talking about. Okay. And thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Oh, thank goodness this only happens once every 28 days. A line open in Hillsboro. Clearwater, you're on the air to WPLP. Hi, Bob. Hi. I hate to break in a serious subject. Uh, I respect the subject that you were on. But I have vivid visions of Lionel and the Ku Klux Klanner. Can I give them to you? You surely can. Okay, here's the way I see Lionel. Uh, he's small built. Um, he's hyper, very, very hyper. Moves around really, really fast. Uh, he's uh, very small, got brown, beady eyes, and he wears big, huge horn rim glasses. And he keeps pushing. I visualize him keep pushing those glasses up his nose. You know, they keep sliding down his nose, and he keeps pushing them up. Yeah, yeah. I'm starting to get that picture, too. Yeah. yeah. And uh, thinning hair, sort of thinning hair. And I think, uh, at first I visualize his mouth. It's a long, narrow, thin lips, real thin lips, but long, a long mouth that wraps almost around his, uh, completely around the bottom of his face. And I think he walks with a swagger, um, to, I guess, to compensate for his small kind of like a Kind of like a weasel in a plaid sports coat. Well, yeah, I could see him. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I think you said it. Uh, the weasel in the sports coat. I can see the sports coat. Yeah, flashy. Where's that flashy? And I think he butts. Uh, I can visualize him butting into other people's affairs, uh, like even strangers in public places. You know, I I don't think he can resist butting into uh, to uh, other people's affairs uh, because uh, uh, his mouth is hard to close at times. No, that's the way I see Lionel. Uh, that's my vision of him when when he talks on on your program, and the uh, the, the Ku Klux uh, 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 Rocky. I see him as uh, short, stocky, and very very callous pants. And uh, I visualize that he's got a couple words. To match his heart, you mean? Pardon? Callous hands to match his heart. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, sometimes he sounds uh, very callous in the heart. Uh, I, a couple words on his face, maybe one around the side of his chin and maybe one up around the nose. Yeah, with hair growing out of them. <laughs> yeah. Just a couple of strands. Yeah, uh, blonde or reddish. Blondish, uh, reddish hair, I think. He's got a receding hairline, and he rarely, rarely combs his hair. He's one of those guys that push is that with his hands, his stubby hands, you know, sort of, uh, it, his hair never looks combed, it's, uh, uh, he just pushes it uh, back with his, uh, with his hands, and uh, he wears uh, work clothes, and I think he walks around wanting to be unnoticed, unlike um, Lionel. Lionel wants to be noticed. Uh, where I think uh, Rocky walks around uh, 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 unnoticed. Well, also, I kind of suspect with Lionel that what he has to do to call the show is tell his wife he's taking the garbage out, and he runs down to the corner to a phone booth. Does he have a wife? Uh, probably. Oh, I don't know how anybody could tolerate that mouth. Well, he's probably very quiet at home. Yes, dear. Yeah, uh, you got a point there. Uh huh. Can I get just more tea, dear? Yeah, y you do have a point there. Uh, he he releases it at the, at the corner phone booth. I think so. Uh, on your program. Yeah, you know, he runs oh. out to the dumpster, oh, throws the trash, that. and then quickly hustles down to the corner to the phone booth. Yeah, I don't think she would uh, tolerate the, the filth that sometimes comes out of his mouth. So I think he has to run down to the to the public phone booth, and he probably rehearses it in the phone booth before he uh, uh, dials your number. So that's the way I see uh, Lionel. Little beady eyes, big glasses, small swagger, flat mm -hmm. coat. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right. So that's the way I see him each time they call. Okay. Talk to you later. Thank you much. Bye. A line open in each county, Hillsborough, 224-0057. Pinellas, 393-0057. In case you're kind of wondering what that was all about, if you weren't here at the beginning of the show, I, I've... I've started to visualize callers. Never happened before, but several weeks ago, maybe as much as two months ago, somebody asked me, do you ever sit there and visualize what your callers look like? No, I didn't. But ever since that night, I just can't help it. Every time I hear a caller, I get this mental image now, most of which are rather amusing. 
And I thought, you know, what, what the hey? I'll give you guys the opportunity as well. Coming up on a minute before the 9 o'clock hour, CBS News headed your way. All of the latest in national, international news, some gossip, maybe even a cute story at the end to bring a smile to your face. Possibly not. We'll just all sit here in breathless anticipation trying to figure out how they're going to end the newscast. Then two more hours on this delightful full moon Wednesday, May 13th, 1987. With me, Lassiter, whatever you do, don't venture very far. mention of his name starts arguments at bingo parlors around town. He's the top-rated Tampa Bay talk show host. Ladies and gentlemen, may I introduce Mr. Bob Lasseter. It's after the hour of 9 o'clock Wednesday, May 13th, 1987. Drop off city during the newscast. All those bewildered people that wanted to talk, uh, man, a lot of them hung up. Two lines available for the moment. One in each county, Hillsboro, 224-0057. Pinellas, 393-0057. Another amusing postcard today. Dear Brother Lassiter, a progress report to inform you that local people more and more are joining in prayer for you. Seven ministers of the Protestant churches, four priests of the Catholic Church, two rabbis of the Jewish faith. We believe that when the members of these churches join together in prayer for you, that it may reach 100,000 as we plan to contact many other groups to join us in prayer for you as we feel you need prayer. My God, this guy's been at it for weeks, and all he's managed to do is to get 13 people to pray for him? Oh, poor man. Oh, well. 224-0057 in Hillsboro, Pinellas 393-0057. As is our custom on full moon nights, we make no effort whatsoever to guide the conversation, so it's totally up to you. Tampa, your turn at WPLP. Lassiter, I have missed you the past week. I've just come back from Phoenix, Arizona, which could be the West uh, Tampa, but a very interesting thing occurred while we were there. We met courtesy and service like you have never encountered. It was amazing to us, uh, whether it was a very inexpensive restaurant or whether it was a very expensive restaurant, no matter where we went, the courtesy of the people in the Phoenix area was outstanding. We had to comment on it a number of times. Well, by and large, the service in this area is deplorable. Yes, it is. This is why it was, it seemed, we, we had decided that this was just normal courtesy, but that we've lived in the Tampa area almost a year now. And we have just become so accustomed to having no courtesy and no service that it, normal service may just have appeared to us to be outstanding. Uh, but in a department store, when I asked about an item, I actually had a clerk say to me, I'm sorry, we don't carry it, but I appreciate your at least asking when you didn't see it. Can you believe that? Amazing. Well, yes, first of all, it's it amazing that you found a clerk. And there were clerks waiting and wanting to help everywhere. Clerks were not standing, talking to each other, discussing their, their date of last night, what they were going to have for lunch, or who bought what shoes, or uh, 
how they like somebody's hair. They were looking for customers. We well, I, I, I contend that Tampa Bay, Florida is the home of mediocrity. It is the capital of mediocrity. People here don't demand service, so they don't get service. They well, get what they demand. Nothing. Well, there is a restaurant that we have eaten in here in this area. We've had lunch a number of times down at the Columbia at Harbor Island, and the service is outstanding, and they are not that high-priced a restaurant. Well, of course, there are places where the service is excellent, but, but by is, and large, it is not the case. That is true, but let me tell you another horror story. We, of course, flew both ways. From the moment we got to the airport in Tampa until we finally landed after a disastrous wait in Atlanta, we had nothing but follow-up on our reservations. Wrong seats, wrong this, wrong that. Everything was terrible. Nothing to eat except a banana and a cracker on a six-hour flight. Okay, so... A banana and a cracker? Exactly. And, uh, of course, they were pushing drinks at three bucks a drink. I don't happen to drink, so that was no big deal to me. But when coming back... We happened, oh, and our luggage was lost for two days, of course. And it went to none of the places that either of the planes that we were on were, were, uh, went to after they let us off. Not the Atlanta flight nor the Phoenix flight. Eventually, the luggage got to us. But the girl that took our customer service report the night of the lost luggage happened to be on the reservation desk the, the day that we left Tampa and recognized us instantly and said, I'm going to upgrade your seats to first class because you've just been so terrific about the, the terrible things that have happened to you with our airline. And so we were delighted, of course. So we get into the plane, we get into first class seats, and comes dinner time. The poor steward comes over to us, and he's blushing and stammering, and he says, I'm sorry, you've got first-class seats, but I'm going to have to serve you the uh, coach food. And he was as embarrassed. I would rather have stayed in my coach seat and avoided the embarrassment with the six other people, everybody looking at us. And, and you, do you understand what I'm saying? Oh, I do understand I mean, what you're was, saying. It was, it, it negated the effort that the young lady had made toward assisting us and doing something pleasant for us to take away from this. And we get back in, uh, we get to Atlanta, and our flight has been delayed, of course. And they tell us instead of leaving Atlanta at 11 o'clock, we're going to leave at 1 o'clock. Okay, at, uh, we then find out that the plane that was leaving from Montreal and going to Philadelphia was still on the, on the, uh, ground in Philadelphia. They couldn't tell us when anything was happening. A young, another young lady came to the desk and finally called somebody and she said, I don't understand this. You have this flight now scheduled to come in here at one o'clock in the morning. You have another flight coming in at exactly the same time. Is this right? And they, and they said, well, they would check it. About an hour later, they called back and they said another airline was going to take us on as passengers. And the courtesy of that airline was unbelievable. But I would never fly with the original airline ever again, no matter what they did for me, because they embarrassed my, my family and myself beyond words. The discourtesy, the not caring right along the line, except for one person that I met in Phoenix. And By the way, did you hear Art Deneen when you were in Phoenix? Pardon? Did you hear Art Deneen on the radio when we Oh, yes. Uh, that's, Still that's, there. Mm -hmm. Amazing. They have, they have very interesting talk radio there. Uh, uh, obviously, I'm a fan of yours. But uh, the people, even the people who are obviously not well-educated, have comparatively intelligent remarks to make about things. They have definite opinions about things. It was it was a very interesting experience. Well, unfortunately, in the week that you were gone, someone has come into the Tampa Bay area and poured something into the water supply system because uh, I don't think there have been more than perhaps four intelligent phone calls the entire time <laughs> that you've been gone. And I only got two of those four. Oh, <laughs> But it was very, very interesting. And the thing that's frightening to me is that have we gotten to, we're afraid that we are becoming so um, 
Our expectations have lowered to such a degree of what we anticipate as far as service, as far as contact with other human beings, that we're definitely thinking about making another move. We, as I say, we've been here not quite a year and have spent a tremendous amount of money on making this move on what we thought was a progressive uh, vital area. What, you got sucked in by the Chamber of Commerce yes, literature? we did, we did, we did indeed. America's next great urban disaster? It, it truly is. This is the most ill-planned, non-thinking area that I have ever, ever encountered. Not Tell it like it is, lady. Tell it like it is. This is a disaster here. Well, it seems to me as though it is. It, it just it grinds on my nerves when I hear people trying to pretend otherwise. Well, you know, another thing that was interesting to me is that the growth of Phoenix is so well planned. It amazed me. Of course, they have smog there now. You can... <laughs> I spent five years in that place. Oh, that's well, roughly well, where I spent I my first year in Florida. It was awful. Oh, it's so right-wing that... Uh... Selma, Alabama put it off limits. It's incredible. Never seen anything like it, but the recreational side was good. I enjoyed my boat and tarpon with the Iran-Contra affair, and I think it's obvious to any he's going to be as guilty as sin, and I don't think there's a doubt about that. Now, what are we going to do after this all comes out? What are the alternatives of the American public? Are, are we going to vote he and his cronies out? That style of government? Uh, well, first. Turn out, will it turn out that he might have impeachable offenses? What are we going to do after RW is, is, is exposed completely? What well, are, the how first are we going to punish him? The first thing that we're going to do uh, is probably try and sentence and put in jail the people who actually did these dirty deeds. That's first and foremost. Obviously, Reagan doesn't get elected out of office because he's had his two terms. Reagan's punishment will basically be disgrace. That will be his punishment, and he's the same type of character that Richard Nixon is. He is very, very concerned about his image, his place in history, and his place in history will be the disgrace of the Iran-Contra affair. His place in history will be his double talk, his lying, his hypocrisy. Oh, no, we don't deal with terrorists. By the way, uh, Charlie Perot, could you give me $2 million so I can ransom these people, please, Charlie? Yeah, that, that'll be Ronald Reagan's punishment, and it's a fitting punishment. Well, what do you think we're going to learn from it? Are, are we, there's going to be a constant battle always in a democracy. or In my wild youth, I would have said a great deal will be learned from this, because I thought for sure that a great deal would have been learned from Watergate. Obviously, it was and so I'm not so sure anymore that we'll learn anything from it, but at least we will have a little bit of satisfaction that these idiots who have been running rampant, making their own foreign policy, cutting deals left and right, uh, setting their friends up to make millions upon millions upon millions of dollars in profits on arms sales, they will go to jail, and so we'll get a little satisfaction out of it. Will we learn from it? I doubt it. Yeah, it's interesting. You know, this, this, this Clarence Barbie trial, the guy is... Uh, Klaus Barbie, yeah. Klaus has decided... To, <laughs> right. He's decided that he's not going to participate in this trial anymore. And supposedly the reason for these trials are, are to uh, punish these people that were so inhumane to man. And the implications are that there's going to be a lot of nastiness comes out in the, in the way that people uh, collaborated and put things together for their own benefit. And well, unfortunately, the country of France does not have a glorious uh, history as no, far as the Second all. World War is concerned. But you know what I was thinking last year? Here we are. We're, we're, we've got this thing, man's inhumanity to man, and the way that people have been treated uh, uh, in World War II, not only by, you think about it, all the wars, the, the inhumane treatment. But now here we are with South Africa, mm -hmm. a government that is suppressing people by force, mm -hmm. no trials, no nothing. And our country, in its own unique hypocritical way, sits on its duff and doesn't do anything. When we're trying to fool with Contras down in Nicaragua, it's absolute insanity. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. Absolute insanity makes no sense at all. And it, it's almost to the point where it is so frustrating that it's hardly even worth thinking about. You, 
I, I almost try to ignore it. If you want to know the truth, it's just too too damn frustrating. There's nothing that can be done. Oh, I nothing. think the, you don't think there's anything that can be done. No. You don't think the country is could uh, possibly come up with some with quality people. You know, like your your show you said for two weeks that just had a lull. People, the quality of conversation was poor, and there were a lot of idiots and and just plain just nuts. And then it comes around. Don't you think that same cycle can hit our government? Hit our government? No. Who's our last good president, really good president, that history is showing? Boy, that's a tough question. A real tough question. Across the board, I guess, Harry Truman. Uh, there were flashes of brilliance and some other people along the way. Even Richard Nixon that's had right. flashes of brilliance. Okay, so that's how many years ago? 19, what, 72 he was tossed out? 72, 74. Long time ago. Mm. Not so long, but yet a long time ago in our type of government. Yeah. Maybe, just maybe, programs like yours where you have open talk, just maybe people will begin to think. I don't know. Uh, it's still, with all its faults, uh, a great country to live in. But uh, there's some serious problems coming our way, and I just, I just, uh, I'm very concerned when people, uh, like you say, they don't even pay attention to this Iran contra. They don't understand it, don't comprehend it. I thank you much. Okay, thank you. Be good. A line open in each county. St. Pete, hi, you're on the air, WPLP. Uh, hello, Bob. Hi. Uh, yeah, I wanted to say, what's the story with this McFarland? You know, is he a fudge master? You know, uh, the Hershey Highway. Um, do you have any comment on that? I don't know what the hell you're talking about. You know, smoking sausage. I mean, if you'd like to speak English, I, I suppose we might be able to hold a conversation. But as long as you're trying to be cute, uh, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. Um, well, that's all right, Bob. Okay. I was just picking my nose, and I decided to call in and, uh, Wouldn't you know, surprise me in the least. Brandon, you're on the air, WPLP. <laughs> I don't believe anybody can top that. Hey, Bob, come yeah. comment. Mm -hmm. Your producer sounds like a real nice guy. Mm, sounds can be deceiving, sir. He's mean. Ah, no way. Uh, anyway, after uh, hearing Senator Hatch today, I, I don't know. He's about to change my mind. I think him people's ready to come down here. Did you get that impression? Which people are ready to come down here, sir? I'm not sure. He said everybody, Cubans, Russians. Did you hear that big speech he made? No, I didn't hear very much of the hearings at all today. I unfortunately was tied up in other things. Well. So I, <laughs> and I don't know what you're talking about. That's what I can't understand is why all the Republicans are making a big speech for Reagan and the Democrats aren't saying anything. Well, isn't there two sides of that story? They're only bringing one of them out. I, I don't know what you're talking about, sir. Well, it seems like the Republicans are making the, the witnesses sound great, and the Democrats are trying to make them sound bad, and you don't know who to believe. And the girl on the when they had the breaks, one of them's for the Republicans and one of them's for the Democrats, so you can't get a true story about anything. Well, I. Sorry, feel that way, but th thanks for the call. Hey, I want to say, do uh, do they make guns here in Florida? Uh, yes, sir, they do. Well, I see where they got that great gun law. I figured they must. Everybody's going to have one. You can carry it around, and if you get mad, you can just shoot somebody. That'll take care of that. Okay? Okay. Thank you. All right. <sighs> You know, you reach a point when you do a talk show, when you run into a period like I've run into, where your first inclination is, hey, don't fight it, just just go in, let let them have their fun, and, and just kind of muddle through it for three hours and pick up your money and go home. But after, what, like five, six nights in a row, 
of people that I, I don't even know what the hell they're trying to talk about. Most of them nice people. Some of them just jerks. But for the most part, nice people. But nonetheless, I don't, I don't know what anybody is talking about. You get a little tired of it. And I'm getting a little tired of it. And uh, I don't really feel like sitting here and, and talking to bewildered people. I don't really feel like sitting here and talking to people who are trying to be, to be swift and funny and who aren't. So I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to give out the phone numbers. And we're really going to retire from this. And you people can just ramble on about anything you want. Please don't ask me questions. Don't ask me my opinion. Don't ask me to explain anything. Because I'm just absolutely fed up. Absolutely, positively fed up. Don't need this grief. Don't need this aggravation. And yet, you know, I've got to come in here and do my bit and pretend like we're doing a talk show. Which we have not done for over a week now. And I, I know there's not a hell of a lot going on that you want to talk about. There's a great deal going on, but, you know, you just don't want to talk about it. You just don't want to deal with it. Hey, that's cool. So we'll take a break, and when we come back, you know, I'm sitting here now watching all the lights light up, and people are going to be saying, oh, Bob, don't do that. We need you here. Oh, Bob, please don't do that. Well, you know, whatever. We'll take a little break here. We'll play some commercials. We'll come back, and we'll just punch up the calls as they come in. Whatever you want to talk about, fantastic, but... I'm just not going to be part of it anymore. The phone numbers that put you on the air at WPLP are in Hillsborough County, 224-0057. In Pinellas County, 393-0057. And anywhere else, toll free, 1-800-334-0057. Those Goodyear guys are pretty sharp. They are? Yep, I put them to the test. You did, huh? Yeah, you see, I took advantage of this sale on great-looking Goodyear Eagle ST radials and high-performance Eagle GT radials. You buy three tires at the regular price, you get the fourth one free. And? Had them installed, went to pick up my car. Uh -huh. Then I asked him, okay, which tire is the free one? Which tire the is... The Goodyear guy pointed to the right front. That's the free one, he said. He knew. Right front. Yep. Sale ends May 23rd at participating Goodyear retailers. Right front. Yep. Goodyear, take me home. Whatever happened to real calories and maybe 10 minutes between you and three ounces of lean trim steak. Give me a steak and I won't be blue. I gotta take for some real food. Beef, real food for real people. Sponsored by the Beef Industry Council and Beef Board. Hear it first on WPLP. Few people realize it, but a record-breaking moment took place recently in Tallahassee when Governor Bob Martinez signed his name to a billion-dollar tax increase, the single largest tax increase ever enacted in the history of Florida. That's quite an achievement. You suppose maybe somebody should notify the Guinness Book of Records? I mean, a record-breaking event like that shouldn't go unrecognized, right? But don't worry. Governor Martinez and his friends in the legislature have ensured that you'll be able to participate in their record-breaking feat by paying more for virtually everything you ever buy and virtually every service you ever need. A billion dollars in hidden tax that you'll end up paying for. Terrific. So if you want to let Governor Bob Martinez know what you think of his billion-dollar record-breaking tax increase, call him in Tallahassee at 904-488-4441. We're sure he'd like to know. And that's why this message has been brought to you by this station and the Florida Association of Broadcasters. This is Don Richards in the WPLP News Center. Join Chuck Carter and For the People weekdays at noon here on your news and talk station, WPLP. Nine thirty-six at the time. Now, yeah, I know I'm being very childish and very immature, but I'm just really fed up with it. So, guys, you do whatever you want with it, and take it any place you want to take it, and ramble on about anything you want to ramble on about. And I'm just going to kind of sit here and say hello and goodbye. All the rest is yours. Okay, Saint Pete. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Uh, 
I just wanted to make a remark about I sent a letter to the uh, editor at the St. Petersburg Times and got a response in the mail from some real nut. Uh, now, could I read the brief letter I sent to the Times, or you don't want me to? I don't give a damn what you do, sir. Okay. I put this in the Times. Regan's total involvement in the Iran-Contra affair and supplying to the samosan style Contras would be equal to our government supplying organized crime with drugs and weapons. The only difference is that organized crime doesn't have a reputation for killing women and children while the Contras do. How long are the American people going to be hoodwinked by this lying, deceitful, and hypocritical president? And here's the last two sentences. Our great nation deserves a better president and vice president. Both these men should resign or be removed from office. Now, what do I get in the mail uh, at my house uh, in reference to my letter? If our president was a fanatical Catholic Democrat, that would be okay, right? You can kiss the Pope's, you know what, ass, you stupid commie. Go put your head in a pail of water three times and pull it out twice. Go back to the crap house where you came from. I have put a fatal hex on you. It works fast. I hate you, and I hate your family, you stupid moron. Signed, 100% American. Can you imagine that, the 100% American? Bad luck to you, dummy. Someday you will wish you have a president like Reagan. You have a stomach cancer. That's it. That's it, Bob. I know you said you don't want to make any remarks or anything like that, so you can just cut me off. Goodbye. Bye. Clearwater, your turn at WPLP. Hello. Yes, sir, Mr. Bob Lasseter. Am I talking to Bob Lasseter? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, do you believe in a virgin birth? No, I'm not supposed to ask a question. I'm going to tell you about it. Uh, about 30 years ago, there was a research project uh, by a, a well-recognized scientist who uh, decided to see whether this was possible, and he experimented with uh, a few rabbits. And uh, what he did was uh, he froze the fallopian tubes and uh, was able to make conception, and there was birth. The only problem being is that all of the offspring were clones of the mother. In other words, if you had a Mala Monroe who had fallopian tubes uh, that were frozen, there would be much Marilyn Monroe's. Uh, he submitted his uh, research papers to through the proper channels and and somehow it got up to Congress to, uh, and somebody saw it, they said, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, what, what's going on here? So what he was trying to do is to prove that this virgin birth that uh, only, only gives clones females, that he wanted to prove that, that also could be males. But it never got beyond <laughs> that point, and we haven't heard any more about it. But anyway, all the women of yours listening out there, they have to understand that they are very, very powerful. They can, in fact, reproduce themselves, clone themselves by freezing their fallopian tubes without men, and we have a woman world. Wouldn't that be wonderful? And you're silent. This is an actual thing. Hey, I'm not kidding you. This is science paper. Okay with me. <laughs> you sort of uh, feel like I'm uh, pulling you away. This is not so. This is the truth. And uh, the only problem happened to me with the uh, the fact that uh, no more research in this area. But the women can, in fact, rule the world by reproducing themselves without men. Isn't that great? But turn you on. It's fine with me. Is that it? <laughs> okay. Okay. Bye Thank bye. you. One line open. It's in Pinellas. Temple Terrace, hello. One line open. It's in Pinellas. Temple Terrace, hello. Whoop. Whoop. Mm-hmm. Hello. Yeah? Hello. Can you hear me? 
Yeah. Unfortunately. I know a lot of you don't like calls like that, but what the hell was the highlight of the guy's career, you know? Tampa, you're on the air to the PLP. Hello. Hey, Lou, Bob. I come from Jamaica, and I come to Tampa, and I've been up here for about a week now, and I uh, don't understand the way you all put down President Reagan. Hello? Uh-huh. Uh, I'd just like to say one thing to you, Mr. Lasseter, uh... Full jank in, Bobby boy. Called it 12 times last night. This makes the point today. Well, the petition's doing pretty good. So all you out there who want them off... Don't worry, I'll get him off. Largo, you're on there, WPLP. Yes, Bob, how's so far doing? Fine. That's good. Uh, and the Boland Amendment is from October 3rd, 1984 to December 19th, 1985. And uh, July 16th and 17th through August 8th falls into that category, 1985. It kind of does. Uh-huh, it looks that way. And about arms control, mm -hmm. there's a lady, uh, Brady, I believe she's the wife of one of the people that got shot, uh, Senator Brady, if I'm correct. Well, no, it was uh, James Brady's presidential press secretary. Okay, that got shot, and uh, she's uh, doing some pretty good stuff about that arms control. Mm -hmm. I think we should look into that if we're, you know, looking to do something about arms control. I think we should look at what she has. Well, you're talking about gun control. Gun control, right. Gun, gun control. Of course, her husband's employer, our beloved leader, Ronald Wilson Reagan, lends his picture to the National Rifle Association, which is fighting tooth and nail against Mrs. Brady. Well, we're... You know, abs absolutely give up on the dream of gun control. Just give up on that dream. You're not going to see it happen at any time in the foreseeable future. And at some point down the road, when people are afraid to drive their cars for fear of getting shot by a good Samaritan or afraid to walk down the street or when you open up the newspaper and you find 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 people a day in a community like Tampa Bay being shot accidentally or because of a jealous uh, spouse, whatever it might be, then and only then will the people say, oh, my goodness, we have to do something about this. In the meanwhile, you're wasting your time. And people like Ben Linder, we could be one of those people right here in the United States. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, thanks a lot, Bob. Thank you. Line open in each county. Dunedin, hello. Hey, is this Bud Lassinger? Mm-hmm. A subhuman pig here. How you doing? Fine. Glad to hear it. Hey, Bud, on this uh, Iran Contra affair, you know, last November, I guess, when it broke, uh, you made an observation. You know, either Ronald Reagan knew what was going on and therefore was in trouble, or he didn't know and was e equally uh, in trouble. And I kind of suspected the same thing. But then later on, Robert McFarlane became a, a central figure as, w as well as North. And then it removed all doubt in my mind. Reagan had to know damn right well, and you have to understand the military mind, especially of the officer corps. 
uh, when they're young and beginning out in their careers, uh, they're all pushed to assume responsibility, but then they get to a point in their career when they've pretty much climbed the ladder where the last thing they want to do is overstep boundaries and possibly jeopardize their career. Uh, they're very, very good order takers. No, I think you've missed on something. You've missed out on something. Uh, perhaps the most, at least in my humble opinion, in my little mind, one of the most significant things to come out so far in the Contra hearings, Contra around hearings. There's just a, a little sidebar that uh, was kind of even amusing until you really stopped to think about it. General Secor talking about the afternoon that North got fired when he and uh, he, Secor, his attorney in North, met in a hotel room and a call came in from the president and Lieutenant Colonel North immediately snapped to attention. Huh? while talking on the telephone. Now, this is amusing until you really stop to think about it. What are we dealing with here? We're dealing with a fanatic. We're dealing with a lot of fanatics, not just Colonel North. Men who have lost touch with reality, men who worship at the feet of a god, in this particular case named Ronald Wilson Reagan. Uh, this is almost Hitler-esque. Uh, this is scary. This is frightening. And this is what we're dealing with. Well, that's the military mind once again. I mean, we have these people who are... These people would just as soon have <clears throat> their male members cut off and shoved in their ears than betray their leader. Well, they don't realize that Ronald Wilson Reagan is just like you and me. He ain't nothing but a man. But all, all you know, uh, point well taken, they were following a chain of command. That is the, uh, the zenith of their... They're calling us. They were following the chain of command, and Ronald Reagan was that. I know damn right well that Reagan was calling the shots, and uh, I think what personifies my point is Ronald Reagan's own stories are changing daily now. It mm -hmm. caught up with him. Yep. And according to NBC News tonight, uh, it is starting to consume the White House. Yeah. As well it should. Yeah, it's a house of cards, and it, it just came tumbling down. But uh, I don't think there should have been in, in, any doubt in anybody's mind as to who was calling the shot. Uh, I'm sure if Reagan gave him free reign, I'm sure that he dropped a hint in the right directions. But I think the Teflon's fallen off at this point. It should have fallen off long before this. You're here. Thank you, my friend. Take care, Bob. Be good. Bye-bye. <laughs> the house is locked. Brilliant that you are able to not respond to all those rude noises. However, and well, I Well, so few of us in this life, so few of us in this life ever get a moment in the sun. Who am I? Who am I to? Uh, that, that's that poor soul's shining moment in life. Who, who am I to rain well, on this parade? Perhaps uh, you're a bright spot in the evening for most people that listen. And I agree with you about Ronald Wilson Reagan and what he's doing. However, I'm calling tonight because today in the paper on May 13th, uh, I read some articles. Indigent health package approved, Senate approves tighter rules for home health care, and then another page. Who might be caregivers? But most of all, I wanted to respond to your silence and to your remarks, and I enjoy when you're giving your editorials on an evening with comments about your feelings and the interpretation of the news. I think it's an intelligent, it's stimulating. Yeah, it leaves most people speechless. Probably, and I'm uh. not uh, very good at verbalizing, but I just needed to call to tell you that we are all listening. Thank you much. Goodbye. Seminole, you're on here at WPLP. Hello. Hey, Bob. How's it going? Fine. Yeah, I want to talk about uh, the uh, government and the CIA. Well, now, uh, Bush is a former head of the CIA, am I correct? Yeah. Okay, well, the way I perceive this whole this, this whole situation here is that uh, Ronald Reagan is a feeble old man being led around by Bush, the, shall we say, more experienced man in the government, and uh, all these things that are happening, like with the Iran-Contra affair, 
uh, Reagan may be guilty of uh, negligence by not watching what's going on, but I feel he's been led around by the nose by Bush and the boys. And, um, for instance, North and uh, McFarland, uh, they're just obviously CIA agents. And uh, the first code uh, of the game is going to be is obviously, uh, you know, never tell on your cohorts and never tell who you're working for. So um, they're going to they're going to try to take the blame here. But you know who's going to come out clean is Bush, and I believe Bush is on top of it all. If they're really looking for somebody to blame, I think they should really dig a little deeper because I, I, I strongly believe that Bush has a lot more control of what's going on than we Well, want. if it makes you happy, believe it. I'd prefer to stick with the facts as they're coming out. Well, what do you, what do you, do you believe that? What did I just say? Well, you said you uh, choose to stick with the facts. Yes, as or, they're coming out, right. Or aren't they maybe just a representation of the facts? I prefer to stick with the facts as they're coming out. I don't but, really, but they're I'm not, not really into fantasy. How do you know that they are? The, how do you know they're the facts, though? All you know is what you hear and what's going on in trial. That that could all just be a big tree ring circus to satisfy the American public that uh, you know found out about what's going on. It could be just a big three ring circus to entertain everybody, buddy, and uh, shift the blame here and there. But actually, the blame is, is you know, doesn't really shift into the right place. Well, like I said, if it makes you happy, believe it. Yeah, sure. It's not. Well, it'll make me happy. That's what I think, anyway. Well, whatever. Okay, we'll see you later, Bob. Okay. Miami, you're on here, WPLP. Bob! Yes. Hello! Hello. Can we be carried over after the news? Yeah. Okay. This is paying for this call. You, I hope. Yes. Mm -hmm. This is a legitimate telephone call. To the king of Tampa Bay Radio, Bob Lasseter. Top banana, top banana. Who? Top banana. Are you allowed to say banana on the air? I believe so. Oh, okay. We have some great stuff for you. Oh, what's that? Uh, uh, well, it's by the it's allow, allow me to in, allow, one, one, one second. Allow me to introduce you to the audience. This, uh, ladies oh, and gentlemen, no. is a um, a young man who bills himself as Fruitcake. He writes a newsletter in the greater Miami area on uh, talk radio. He has a fair amount of inside knowledge, not nearly as great as he thinks he does. You're on the air, dummy. Yes, go ahead. Not you. Uh, as I was saying to the audience, he has a fair amount of inside knowledge, not nearly as great as he thinks he does, but at times he does surprise oh, us. Oh, not, not this time. This time I have the inside scoop. Really? And you might even have a chance to come down here. Oh, really? Sorry, I said that. Well, you can say whatever you want. This is talk radio in Tampa Bay. Uh, yes. Full moon night. What else is new? Can we tell everybody what the competition is doing tonight? By the way, I was on the air under your competing station a few minutes ago. Oh, well, it's marvelous. And I talked about South Florida palmetto bugs. Oh. Excellent. Uh, fruitcake, ladies and gentlemen, is a young man that likes to call talk radio shows. Well, I'll put you on hold, Fruitcake, and uh, when I'm, we come I'm back... I'm a Bob Lasseter fan. And when we come back after the news, we'll find out just what it is that Fruitcake is talking about. You're listening. Warren has the forecast. Mike Hennessy, the sports. Randy Wilburn, the financial news. Tomorrow morning between 5.30 and 9 on the WPLP Morning News. We'll be talking about him tomorrow morning in trailer court recreation halls all over Tampa Bay. But you can listen to him live tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, may I present Bob Lassen. Seven minutes after the hour of 10 o'clock. Welcome back. Third and final hour for this Wednesday night, May 13th, 1987. A night that may live in broadcast infamy. You'll just have to wait and find out. Standing by on hold, uh... 
notorious caller from the Miami market. Not very notorious up here, but you got to say that, you know, the kid's got, the kid's got chutzpah and is, is trying very hard to make his mark in tap, and he just hasn't really been able to get through. But nonetheless, uh, Fruitcake, you're still there. Yes. Okay, you said that you had uh, hot yes. rumors. Rumors. Okay. Before but... I tell you then, before I tell you then, I want to make one fact known. Mm-hmm. I was on every single show in Tampa, whether you like it or not. Oh, I know that. On the Mr. Wet Noodle Show. On the dating show, and on Tim Cole's show, and on John Eastman's show, and on everybody's show. Oh, I've heard you many times. So don't tell me I haven't made my mark there. Well, but nobody here knows or cares. Oh, yes, It's, they it's a lot different than Miami, you see. Nobody here really cares. Well, they're all Neanderthals. What? So, uh, what, what's your big, uh, big scoop, uh, Okay, Fruitcake? the big scoop is, now where do you want us to start, from AM, FM, or PM? Any place you want for a cake. Okay, how about... You're I, dying. I'm going to leave the best for last. Okay. By the way, my name is Neil. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, Avi. Don't do that. Oh, you can say the name up there. Nobody knows me up there. That's right. Okay. Now. See, that's what I told you. Nobody knows you up here. Nobody cares. That's because they're all degenerates and the Neanderthals and they don't know what's going on. I mean, anybody who listens to BW at night has got to have a problem. Do you agree? Well, go ahead with your school. Okay, okay, okay. You're being pushy about it. Okay, number one. You know uh, Hot 105? Nobody up here knows Hot 105. Well, okay, I mean, I get, get down, to, get down to the stuff that these people up here know about that you think you know. Okay, AM. See, you've made me do this, but I spoke tonight to Fluffy McCallum for about an hour or so. Uh-huh. And I, now just remember I told you this. Now I know as soon as I get off the phone, you're going to call up Neil and don't call him up because he has a sick person in the house and he's very upset. All he does is need to find out that I called up Fluffy. I've already talked to Neil tonight. You have? What time? During the news? No, I talked to Neil at about uh, 7.30. And did you steal some of his material? No. Uh-huh. Today he was... Written- no, actually I got Neil on the Cable News Network. The Cable News Network wanted me to be on uh-huh. for the So Far campaign. I declined and sent him to Neil, and so I called up to well, uh, discuss that with here. him. That's true. And not only that, but one of these days I'm going to call you up. I have a tape about him and him and Kathy West talking about you and your reasons for marriage. Oh, oh that should have been classic. Very upset. You don't want to know what they said. Oh, okay. But go ahead with your rumors. Okay, now. my rumors, my rumors. I spoke to Fluffy McCallum today. Mm-hmm. And Who's I told that? her that if she doesn't stop talking about capital punishment, then she's going to lose her job. Mm-hmm. That's her voice. So she has loose vocal cords. Mm -hmm. And I think that I gave her a long enough speech, and she says that she will probably try that. Tomorrow she has on the man who won the America Cup. What's his name? Jimmy Connors? Something like that. Cool. That's that's close enough. Just just go on. Connors, something like that. For the first hour. And then after that, she's going to have some guy from South Africa a bathroom janitor from South Africa radio station. And he's going to be talking about apartheid. And I explained to her how, how everybody finds it very exciting down here. Uh-huh. And she goes, I told her she should cancel it. And she goes, Oh, you can't have me cancel it. Nobody knows what the hell you're talking about, Fruke. Get right down to business. Okay. I gave a long speech to Fluffy McCallum. Uh-huh. And you are going to see some drastic changes in that lady. They're going to run her voice through a modulator and make her sound. Uh, is, is this what you called for? Nobody knows who the hell you're talking about. Well, or does tell anybody about care? Fluffy McCallum. Can I tell him about Fluffy? Yeah, she does a talk show from uh, what yeah, two to four on WINZ. She does a talk show for. So let's get down to business. What are the, you know? What are these great scoops? Is that it? That's yes. And and if they don't get rid of her, they're bringing in some guy. I'm not sure where he's from. I think it's Denver. Am I close? I don't know. Or, or Tampa, they're bringing in some new guy in there, and he's supposedly going to be a real powerhouse. Like the, like the, uh, you, you, oh, by the way, I also have a story about your phone number, I'm going to tell you later on. He's, he's a real powerhouse, and he's going to be taking over after Neil. And tell Neil that they should move him from 9 to 1, because anything is better than Lee Fowler. Well, name names, you know, come on, I don't, I don't play games. Well, they name know names. who Fowler is. No, name names about this big powerhouse. 
I'm not sure what his name is. I can only speculate. I heard it's Gordon Bird. Is that true? He's going to be doing his You Told Him show from, from for four hours. I mean, this is the best you can do. It's no wonder you haven't cracked the Tampa market. I mean, come on. You think you said you got a big scoop? Tell me about it. Well, look, see, see the whole purpose of you being up in Tampa is see, Neil will tell you everything, an assumption that you will not tell anybody else anything. So basically, this call is made to milk information out of poor old Bob Lasseter. What do you want to know? Now, do you have any idea who that person is going to be? Because I'm coming out with a newsletter this week. And if you want to get it, I mean, and I'm putting pictures... You're calling me to me. ask me because you think Neil told me? I'm sure he would. Well, I'm sure he would if he knew, but he doesn't know. He doesn't know who it is. Well, I heard it's some guy from Denver. Okay? And he owns a bar. He's a real troublemaker. And I also have Lee Fowler and Steve Kane's new home phone number. Now, you know you want those, right? No. You want to call up Lee and hear his CIA answering machine? No. It's real good. No. Okay. I mean, this is this is what you have wasted six minutes of my time for? I thought you had a big scoop. Well, this is a big scoop. Don't you think that now that, now that Lee Fowler will be going back to Ohio to live with his mother because he can't do anything with any radio station they give him? I mean, fruitcake, nobody knows what the hell you're talking about. I mean, if this is the best you can do, I, I just had three well, calls drop yell, off. You want me to I just had three up. calls drop off, fruitcake. Nobody knows what the hell you're talking about. How, how are they supposed to know? I mean, you and I both know what you're dancing around. Go for it, baby. Go what? for it. You expect me to say an obscenity? You and I both know what you're, you know, alluding to. Go what for it. What am I it. alluding to? Well, you tell me what I'm alluding to, Bob. Well, you tell me or I'm going to move on real quick, fruitcake. I'm not going to play games. They're bringing you back here, Bob. They're resurrecting the old positive-negative pole. You're absolutely wrong. Oh. What are they going to have on? Absolutely wrong. By the way, did you know in September you'll be able to pick up WINZ down in Tampa? Or, I mean, or wherever you are in a Pinellas Park. Yes, I know that. And what are you going to do, boy? You're going to have to compete against two talk men. <laughs> so is that it? What? Is that it? No, and the last thing is that, do you remember back when you were on WGBS? Vividly. Doing night. Nice. Oh, and Painfully that, vividly. Yes. Okay, and I also know by the, the name and phone number of the person who made you say that four-letter word. Great, that's fine. I know you'd like to know who that is. I couldn't care less. I mean, in a seven and a half minutes, you've wasted on my show. You've cleared my board. People have hung up in absolute hopeless well, do you want me, do you want me boredom. To do I can do a monologue about early birds real quickly. No, I don't want a, a monologue about early birds. You don't. You see, you don't know I what you're talking wait, about. You thought you, you thought you had a real cute piece of information, but well, you're what dead wrong. What do you think I had? Well, you've already They're said what you thought I had, that I was going to Miami. I'm get fired. Do you realize that would, what would that would do to South Florida talk radio? I mean, if there would be somebody strong after Neil, that means that Mike Anthony would lose his job, and Lee Fowler would have to go sweeping, you know, bathrooms with John McHugh. Don't you realize how significant this affects your life, Bob? Doesn't affect my life at all. I'm in yes, Tampa. It, yes, it is because see, now Lee Fowler. So I know this for a fact that he was thinking of putting you on from 7 to 9 and Mike Thompson in the afternoon. But he's just mm. too embarrassed to call you up. Do you understand what I'm saying, Bob? No, I don't, Fruitcake. I have no idea why you've called and destroyed my show. I really don't. Okay, now the last thing before you hang up on me. <laughs> the last thing. Hello? Yeah? Back when you were on DBS, when you did not know what was going on here, there were these two credents who would always call you up and give you names, you know, Nelson and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. They are right now incarcerated. Great. Oh, oh and the third thing is, sure get, the, the third, the third thing is, I almost now. forgot, yeah. but we can say it up there. Wouldn't it be embarrassing if a radio station, let's say up in Tampa, were caught crank calling one of their listeners? Mm-hmm. Wouldn't that be embarrassing? Yeah. Well, that's what happened to poor Lee Fowler. Jefferson Pilot found out about it the other day. And boy, they're not happy with him. That's, that's interesting. So do you have any rumors for me? 
no fruitcake because you don't know what you're talking about. What do you mean? Hello? Hello, Bob. Yes? What's the topic tonight? Nicaragua? Positive, negative. Is that about it, fruitcake? Yes. Okay, bye-bye. Wait, you're not telling me the poll. Mm, I thought the kid had some information that might be of interest to us. To join in the conversation, the number to call in Hillsborough County is 224-0057. In Pinellas County, 393-0057. And anywhere else in Florida, 1-800-334-0057. Motorcraft, how the tough get going. That's the sound of a tough Ford truck coming to life in bitter sub-zero temperatures. What gets it going? A Motorcraft battery. Standard in the best-selling trucks because it's built for extra power under the worst conditions. Car, truck, or boat, there's a tested tough Motorcraft battery to help get you started. And a full line of Motorcraft quality parts to help keep you going. Motorcraft exceeds the need. No, 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 no. We don't make carols like they do. We don't make carols like they do. We don't make vacuum cleaners like they do. Oh. Unlike other copier companies, Mita only makes copiers. After all, we didn't get to be the fastest growing copier company by making microwaves. Mita, oh, we make our great copiers. Call 1-800-ABC-MITA. This Sunday, May 17th, from noon to 4 p.m., it's thrills, chills, and hopefully no spills as the crack WPLP Celebrity Bicycle Racing Team squares off against other Bay Area hotshots at the Madeira Beach Middle School for the Wheels for Life Bikeathon to benefit St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Tim Coles will broadcast the excitement live this Sunday from noon to 4. So come watch the boys from WPLP pedal something for a good cause and listen to the action Sunday, noon to 4 on WPLP, Tampa Bay's first news and talk station. God, how would you like to have a kid like that? Oh, his poor parents. Newport Richie, hi, you're on the air at WPLP. Hi, neighbor. How are things in your neighborhood? Fine. Say, listen, Bob. I saw you a while back, and I couldn't believe it. Mm-hmm. You're big. Mm-hmm. I mean, you're really big. Yeah. You're big. You're hairy, too. Yeah. You're, you're hairy like a gorilla. I mean it. Like a gorilla. Don Eden, you're on there at WPLP. Hello? Hello. Hey, uh, Don Eden. Yeah. Is this Bob? Yeah. Hey, Joe. Uh, I've been trying to get in touch with you. I just came out of the hospital. I had four bypasses. And I begged my son to bring over a little radio. I couldn't get you in Largo, you know? Mm-hmm. And may I wish you and your wife the healthiest, the happiest. Well, I thank you very much, and thank and you And may for God the ever be with you. Well, I love you. you, Bob. Thank you much. Largo, you're on the air at WPLP. Hello? Hello. I'm uh, calling from Largo. Yeah. My husband is with the American Embassy in Japan, and I'm visiting my sister and her husband. Mm-hmm. And I've caught your show twice. Mm-hmm. One night you had somebody, uh, I think his name was Lionel. Mm-hmm. And then tonight I turned the radio on. And what is the theme of your show? You know, I can't believe what's happening. Uh, it's uh, almost insanity. Mm-hmm. That's true. It, what, it, what is the theme of the show? Uh, the theme of the show is called uh, Breaking Point. By, well, it uh, certainly sounds like it. How can you contend with some of those people? I can't much longer. Oh, my goodness. Your name is Bob Lassiter? That's right. Where do you come from? Philadelphia, greater Philadelphia. That's where my husband comes from. Oh, my goodness. You know, it's, it's so ludicrous to hear some of these people call you up. And the sounds that are coming off the uh, airways, too. Uh, apparently, somebody is burping or woke yes, up. Apparently. Yeah. Well, I just wanted to find out what the theme is because I have never heard anything like this. You know, I come from Massachusetts, and even in Boston, we don't hear that kind of stuff, you know, and I haven't been home for a while. Uh, Apparently, Tampa, Florida, are you broadcasting from Tampa? Close. Close by? Mm. Apparently, uh, it's going insane, you know. 
Then you don't have a theme. It's just uh, insanity. Yes, just insanity. Oh, Mr. Lassiter. Okay, I just wanted to know. You're welcome. Thank you, sir. Bye. Tampa, you're on the air WPLP. Hey, Bob. Yes. How you doing here? Fine. Hey, you know what the definition of our ironic is? That's a guy that uh, can call up here. You, you've got a hell of a lot to do to get your license, to maintain your license. So does your engineer. So I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't have a license, sir. So, well, so do the people who have to maintain it to be on the air and have a right to transmit. And here's a guy that calls you and gets 10 minutes on the air with you that probably don't even know the word of a green card, and he should have one. They call him Fruitcake. Yes, they, they call him Fruitcake. Mm -hmm. That's right. He calls himself Fruitcake. He calls himself Fruitcake. How many mm -hmm. times has he been calling you? That's the first time I've ever heard him. No, I don't let him on very often. No, but he makes his stay. He got 10 minutes of your time. I'm not knocking you. I know you got to let people know. You know, you got to let them see. And he gets all that. That's a hell of a lot. That's, that's ironic. Yeah, yeah, I guess it would be. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Keep the faith. Will do. St. Petersburg, you're on there, WPLP. Yeah, I think you're right. Your, your intelligent listeners must be out of town, most of them. Some of us are still here, though. Okay. Okay, I wanted to uh, make a suggestion that perhaps to... Um, Maybe you can weed out some of this before uh, hand. Maybe you can get with the station management or something, and they can uh, insert between the previous program and your program a reading of the uh, cable and uh, network television listening. Listening, and maybe it might uh, entice some of these people to sit there and uh, you know be mesmerized by the box or something instead of uh, you know destroying valuable airtime. You think maybe that might do it? If it's a possibility. I'm possibly. willing to try almost anything. Yeah, I'm, point the game. I'm curious about uh, something else. You uh, Last time I talked to you, last week sometime, uh, you were uh, getting uh, euphoric over something that you said that had changed your life or something. And you mm -hmm. announced it later. Have you announced that yet? Or? No. You yeah, haven't. You're still, uh, you're still sitting on it. Huh? Still sitting on it. <laughs> okay. I guess I'll have to wait and... Uh, and see what it was. It's known as a tease. A tease. A tease. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Bye. Vanellis, uh, 393 0057, Hillsboro, 224 0057. <sighs> this is just beyond belief. Just utterly beyond belief. Just don't know what has happened. But, um. for the next one to come in. They keep coming. I don't know why, but they keep coming. You'll indulge me, I do smoke. Tappy, you're on here at WPLP. How are you tonight, Bob? <laughs> Great. Good. Can I... I want to be uh, serious tonight. Has anyone yet spoken about the president in, in Iran? No, not a soul. You know, for two nights now, I've been listening to you complain about the different listeners, so let's, I'm a little nervous, I don't know why, but <clears throat> maybe you and I can talk for a few minutes about it. What do you think is the broad implication for the country when the president keeps saying, well, I don't remember what was happening. Let me consult the diary. Then you hear in the uh, hearings today and yesterday and the day before. Well, why doesn't the president just look up and see what's happening? I recall North telling him, and I think that I discussed an issue with him. What do you think it means to the whole country when the president doesn't really have a recollection, has to consult the diary, and then doesn't tell the whole truth? Well, I, I don't really wish to um, to be to be rude, but I, I'm simply just not into talk radio where people call up and ask the host, "What do you think?" No, uh, I, I prefer to talk to people that have some thoughts themselves. Well, I, I've got some thoughts. I just wanted to know. Okay. Um, well, I'm I'm afraid that there's going to be a lot of meddling in the Congress 
and trying to usurp powers that the president has in the foreign policy area if we want to limit ourselves to just foreign policy because the president has not been forthright in issuing policies and standing by them and you know i think the congress unfortunately has spent a lot of time interfering in foreign policy when they shouldn't have for instance waffling continuously about what to do in nicaragua but now they're going to as a result of these hearings they could really spend a lot of time figuring out ways of extending for instance maybe the, the war powers act of 73 and really restrict the president's ability to conduct foreign policy I don't know that it would restrict the president's ability to conduct foreign policy. It might restrict the president's ability to conduct foreign illegal wars. Well, that's, that's really what they wanted to do with the War Powers Act. Uh, which doesn't I sound think. like the worst idea I've ever heard. Pardon me? doesn't sound to me like the worst idea I've ever heard. I, I'm not a great fan of illegal undeclared wars. Oh, no, we shouldn't do that. And we've done a lot of that in Central and South America, as well as other places. But... Uh, you know, I don't think that there's anything wrong with the way our system develops foreign policies. In other words, the president is supposed to formulate it and carry it out. But, uh, you know, I, I think that too many of the conservatives that he brought in with him went very much overboard and really don't understand that we've got a democratic, a representative democracy and we should all work together to form foreign policy. Well, you're very astute and far more astute than most people who have two or three times the number of years that you have under your belt. Yeah. Well, do you think that... You're quite right. It yeah. will have a profound effect on future dealings between the president and the Congress. Well, that, I think, in my, in my opinion, that's probably the worst thing that could happen because, you know, you can get a good president that everyone will rally behind his foreign policy proposals. And, uh, you know, I think the Congress is going to lash out, but, you know, it's, it's very difficult to, to try to restrict what the president should do because the, the, all the people get behind the president and vote. You know, that's why he has the foreign policy control because the whole country votes for him. So we finally have one person with whom uh, we trust to, to carry out our country's wishes. But we have a concept in this country known as joint and shared power. That's right. And it's something that the Reagan administration chose to ignore. So administrations that uh, are yet to come will have to live with the mistakes of this administration. Well, and we'll have to pay the price. Yeah, you know, it's a shame that we have to use the word mistakes because a lot of it, they, they planned it. And throughout the end of the 70s, they planned the, the conservatives and the ultra-conservatives, you know, the uh, real ideologues, really formulated a lot of policies to really wipe out doing things as joint and uh, several, you know, what was the phrase that you used? Uh, joint and shared responsibility for these things. You know, it infuriates me that there's money that used to be spent, public money that used to be spent on free pamphlets of the government printing office. used to, you know, Pueblo, Colorado. You remember hearing ads? Mm -hmm. They cut the funding to that to nothing. And, you know, a lot of people would say, well, why should we have funding to, to find out about how, con how to control fleas and how to control all sorts of things? But they cut out funding so that people in the country no longer have information on where hazardous waste sites are located or where uh, a, a government, you no longer can get access, easy access to, uh, uh, you know, health issues that really are important to us, like what to do about old leaded paint. You can't get that booklet anymore for free. You know, and, and they've, they've really decided that they really don't want a lot of things publicized. And I remember month, remember when you spoke with the man from Miami, the radio guy from Miami talk show? Uh, I'll never forget that. You know, a lot of people really misunderstood the severe implications of what the, uh, what the people, not Mark Fowler necessarily, but uh, the different people in the federal communications are trying to do. They really want to clamp down on speech here. And there's a lot of people who may have left Cuba who are now in Miami that want to restrict speech. And they came to this country because they wanted to exercise that right and then come here and support a president and his policies and the administration to clamp down on people who want to express themselves. My young friend, I wish you had been around a couple of hours ago. I thank you much. Okay. I'll good. call you soon. Zephyr Hills, you're on there at WPLP. Ah, oh, good evening, Mr. Lasseter. Good evening. Oh, I've been listening to your show tonight. I'm kind of hurt. Uh, yeah, really hurt. I've, I've been listening to a lot of those fools and idiots call in. And uh, they, they're talking about Iran and, and everything like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
We have a very important person here, and one of our most outstanding citizens. He's on your show occasionally. He's on there last night. And uh, they've been just calling in and putting him down. And that, that's our good friend, Rocky. And uh, Rocky's not here to protect himself tonight, so I thought I'd give you a call. And uh, there's a lady on there early. She gave a view, you know, about Rocky and Lionel. But she, she didn't have the right view of Rocky. Could I give my view? Oh, I don't care. Well, you see, I view Rocky as a cross between, like, John Rain, the Duke, and Rambo. I mean, Rambo, I mean, he's a fighter. And uh, Mr. John Wayne, he was a good cooper, and like Rocky. I mean, uh, Rocky goes around, and I mean, we help these minorities out, and I mean, all the way back to the turn of the century. I mean, we've been helping them out, like with the garment industry. I mean, we buy our sheets and our pillowcases. Uh, we buy hardware and lumber. There's transportation involved. I mean, we have a hard time. Building all these crosses out in the hot sun, it's a lot of sweat and toil involved. And then there's a transportation problem. So we just can't get up and haul our stuff across the state of Florida or even into Georgia. There's always a lot of, well, I guess you'd call law enforcement officers, and uh, they take a bad view of this. But anyway, I mean, we're willing to work late into the night just to bring... Uh, well, help to the blacks, you know. That's our main interest, is to get attention from the federal government onto these people that would never receive that attention. And, well, we try to be real upstanding and understanding. And, and we'd like to help our brothers out. So that's why I thought I'd call you in. And just, I mean, these people have a bad view of Rocky. And we're not really like that. I mean, we're really hard working. I mean, we put a lot of money into this equipment that we use. And thank heavens, uh, I agree with you on this gun law. I mean, uh, they should have curtailed the sale of guns. That's going to make our cross erections very dangerous indeed. And uh, we're thinking about just cutting down on that since they passed this law. Uh, I'm glad you let me get my view. You've always been a fair man. That's about all I have to say. The phone numbers that put you on the air at WPLP are in Hillsborough County, 224-0057, in Pinellas County, 393-0057, and anywhere else, toll free, 1-800-334-0057. Plymouth challenges the competition with 3.7 annual percentage rate financing or up to $500 cash back on select new models in dealer stock. Get 3.7 financing or $500 cash back on Plymouth Sundance. Price $2,500 less than Honda Accord DX. Get 3.7 or 500 cash back on Plymouth Reliant. Almost $2,400 less than Nissan Stanza four-door. Plus, save up to $700 more with equipment discount packages. Based on sticker price of options, if purchased separately. Or, get 3.7 financing or 300 back on select new Colts imported for Plymouth. These comparisons use base sticker prices, so standard equipment levels may vary. Financing available to qualified retail buyers through Chrysler Credit Corporation. Other rates are available as length of contract increases. And every American-made Plymouth comes with Chrysler's 770 protection plan. See limited warranty at dealer. Restrictions apply. For full details, hurry to your Chrysler Plymouth dealer. First in news. WPLP. 23 million Americans suffer muscular back pain. Irene Hollingshead of New Jersey told us about her backache. I just get that tightening feeling as if someone's tightening up my lower back with a skate key, and it just keeps getting more and more tight. I can sit, but I'm in pain. Tell me, Irene, how do you get relief? With Doan's pills, it's as simple as that. Doan's backache pills contain a pain-fighting ingredient not found in any other leading analgesic, an ingredient so effective it relieves the minor pain of inflammation, muscle spasm, tightness, and stiffness for hours. After taking the Dolan's pill, I didn't have that gnawing pain. I felt my old self again. You sound like you mean it. Dolan's pills really do work. I just stood up so perky, proud as a peacock, and just 
went about my business, and I loved it. Dones pills are super. Get fast backache relief with Dones backache pills. Use only as directed. And for warm relief, penetrating relief that lasts for hours, try Dones backache spray. Hi, everybody. This is Larry King in Washington. You won't want to miss tonight's edition of our Peabody Award-winning Coast to Coast get-together. We have one very special guest. He is a musical legend in his own time. From a boy named Sue to Folsom Prison, he's been doing his thing. Mr. Johnny Cash joins us tonight, and you're invited to call in and talk with him. Johnny Cash, an incredible life, an incredible performer. All tonight on The Larry King Show with your phone calls, all right here on this mutual radio station. 10.38 the time, uh, Tampa, you're on here at WPLP. I'm really soaking wet just thinking about what you're going Tampa, you're on the air at WPLP. Mr. Rosner. Yes. Hey, I just thought we were sitting here, and I'd like you to enlighten all these misinformed people out there about the gun control. I mean, it seems like so many people got their heads shoved up the rear end and just think that, you know, you can just go out and... I don't know, Florida's laws to me seem pretty absurd, like anyone can just go and buy a gun. And it's like there's no questions asked, show them a driver's license and, and some money. And anyone can buy a gun. You know, my God, I think, you know, I agree with you. I think they should control this issue. And I just wish that you would inform some of these people, you know, on, on the issue. I'm not into beating Ted, dead horses, but thank you for the call. Yeah, okay. I'm... St. Pete, you're on the air, WPLP. I'm there. Yep. I'm there. All right. Okay. I've never talked to you before in my life, but I've been listening to this station ever since it was WFSO. And I'll tell you what, I've heard, I just got through watching the James Bond special or whatever, and I heard that one idiot talking to you about whatever he was talking about, and then this other idiot calling you up, calling you McGilla Gorilla and all this crap. I'm homegrown. I'm right here from St. Petersburg, homegrown. Never called this station before, and I think there's just so many jerks out there right now. And I've always wondered why you've never had a guest on your show. It wouldn't do you no good. They will. I don't think they'd understand it. Is that it? That's just about it. I think there's just a bunch of idiots um, out there. Okay. Indian Rocks, you're on here at WPLP. Indian Rocks, are you there? Going once. Going twice. Gone. Sarasota, you're on the air at WPLP. Yes. I'm puzzled about something. McFarlane is not a zealot with a mindset, and he knows right from wrong. I wonder why he didn't resign, because, my, uh, like, the Calb, I don't know which Calb it was, who was speaking for the government, as soon as he was fed misinformation, he quit. Now, why did McFarlane just not take up this stuff if it wasn't legal in the first place? I wouldn't know, ma'am. But it is a question in my mind because the mine is, you know, he's not uh, a zealot like uh, like Norris and the other one, the, uh, whatever his name is. I just wanted to pass along my observation. Okay. Thank you for listening. My pleasure. Bye. Well, if you'd like to be part of this, you've got perhaps uh, 14 and a half minutes left. I'm patient, I'll wait. Excuse me, I didn't mean to bump the microphone. Margo, your turn at WPLP. Oh, Bob? Yes. Uh-huh. Uh, Cheryl Brown, does she remind you of a frump? Something like that. Well, she's going to be coming on here pretty soon. That's all I want to say.
Tampa, you're on the air at WPLP. Hello. Hello. Bob. Yes. What? I feel for you. I can't reach you. Uh, 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 the ones that do make uh, some sense along in the conversation don't like it here. And, uh, 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 so bad, this is so bad. And the others may make such idiotic remarks. And I get on and do the same damn thing. <laughs> Uh, I don't know, honey. I don't know how the hell you put up with it. I'm just, that's all I got to say. Good night. Thank you. Oldsmar, you're on there, WPLP. Yeah, um, I'm calling from Oldsmar, and I was just really shocked that you would allow someone like that to get on the radio. Did I agree with the other guy? Because, um, it's, I'm 16, and it's the first time I've listened to this show. Usually I listen to, like, a pop radio show or something. Mm. And I'm just, I don't know, I was really appalled to hear something like that. I mean, I, you know, when I listen to a radio show or whatever, a news show, I expect to hear something about the economy or the country, but um, not about total idiots who call up and, oh. Which idiot did you have in mind? I've dealt with quite a number of them this evening. On that oh, well, I heard two of them. I heard the first guy who kept calling up and saying things about your station manager and your producer, et cetera, et cetera. And I just thought, oh, my God, how can they allow something like that to get on and to face the show? I don't. I don't know. I was really confused, I guess. So I wanted to call and just, I don't know. It, it got me to listen for about a half hour. So. Well, it's, it's usually a tad more enlightened than it is tonight. Yeah, I, I, just, yeah, I hope so. So do I. But um, I don't know. I was just really shocked. That's all right. Well, I thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Seminole, you're on here at WPLP. Hello, Bob. Hello. Yeah, I was wondering, uh, how come uh, you don't have a joke show on your... I mean, I know a lot of people call up that are a joke, but uh, how come you don't have a little joke line like uh, Jack does? Because I don't do that kind of radio. Uh, what, what, do they, uh, what do they call that uh, joke line there that Jack Wheeler has? I don't know. Uh-huh. Well, I, I'm not. I'm not sure what the name it is, but I think they had to come up with a real tricky little name for it, like to call it the Jack Off Wheeler Athon Jokeathon or something like that. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Um, and, and you know that Iran Contra thing. Um, you were getting onto this uh, so far situation here, uh, freedom of uh, speech. Um, you know, if uh, they control our uh, radios uh, like they're trying to, they're not. We're not going to even be able to hear what's going on in them hearings and stuff like that because they used what what can be considered profanity in the hearing. Are you aware of that? Or yes, I am. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, do you think that they would outlaw something like that if the uh, FCC gets their way? I don't know. Even though, I mean, do you think that they would make an exception because it is uh, something that government officials are saying? Or I believe I just said I don't know. Oh, uh, right. Okay. Okay, Bob. Have a good one. Tampa, you're on the air to WPLP. Good evening, Bob. Uh, I just was figuring out which uh, two candidates I was going to vote for. Uh, I think it's either going to be Pat Paulson or it's going to be Russell Means. Uh, one is, uh, I believe, a Democratic, going to be Democratic, and the other one's going to be Libertarian. And uh, I don't think either one really takes... Uh, I believe we can trust either one of them, over, over Republicans or Democrats. Okay. Uh, did you happen to listen... Uh, I came over here to the University of South Florida and listen to uh, Russell Means? And no. He, okay, well, he, he's trying to be a uh, libertarian uh, uh, nominee for for the party. And uh, and Pat Paulson, I, I made a mistake not voting for him. Uh, I believe I voted for Richard Nixon the first time he ran. And uh, I made a mistake, but this time around, if he's still around, I believe I'll vote for him because uh, uh, I don't think it matters if you're a Republican or a Democrat. I believe we're going to have uh, 200 or whatever it is million or billion dollar deficit or million dollar deficit i don't do you see any way if you vote republican or democrat or do you see a, a difference between foreign policy between republicans and democrats they do you think they'll both uh, believe we should be policemen of the world i don't know sir i just don't know very much anymore at all uh, so how about uh i'm a libertarian um every uh, four years i have to go out and uh, um go out here and and have signatures signed to get on the ballot. Do you think there's any reason why third party is a, parties shouldn't be allowed on the ballot? Uh, is being, I'm not a socialist, communist, or anything. I'm a libertarian, but uh, is there any reason why we shouldn't have more than, uh, than two choices on the ballot? We do, sir. 
um, we have, you can be independent, that's true, but I'm talking about parties. And um, All you have to do is qualify, sir. That's correct. Uh, why is, don't you think it might be that it's a two-party system, they don't want anybody else? I don't know, sir. Well, I think that's another topic we could discuss another night. I'll look forward to it. Thank you. Good night. Clearwater, you're on the air, WVLP. Good evening, Bob. Good evening. Well, um, I don't have a whole lot to say tonight, but um, I kind of feel for you in the way you, um, you know, have to take these different people that don't really uh, seem to know what they're talking about and don't have anything to say other than uh, funny noises in the phone. Uh, I was reading something recently that um, I thought really applied to uh, what you try to do on your program. And this article about uh, how we really live in a barbarism rather than a, a society because it's, uh, and it defines barbarism as uh, a society lacking in the social graces. You know, we have plenty of machines and uh, we can do lots of violence, but. Um, being able to sit down and talk to one another or take responsibility for anything um, often just seems to be either not important or beyond uh, the average person. <clears throat> you know, we have we have lots of um, things like nylon shirts and uh, cosmetics and things that cover up uh, <clears throat> what's uh, truly there. But um, you know, getting down and just talking to somebody and uh, running the society and taking responsibility for what needs to be done in it seems to be kind of difficult. So anyway, um, if if people uh, just you know run around trying to hate each other and uh, not uh, talk to each other, you know, they they give the government the uh, responsibility for everything and uh, they want to I guess attack anybody that uh, tries to make them take a little bit of the responsibility themselves you know for knowing what the government is doing or uh, electing somebody that can do something it certainly looks like that uh, we need to have a at least uh, maybe one other party to give us some choice in the uh, in the government, but I don't really see that uh, that that's going to happen, or anybody's going to be interested enough to do anything about it. I uh, thank you much. Okay. Okay, Tampa, you're on the air to WPLP. Yeah, Bob. When I called up, your producer said I'll let Bob hang up on you. Why is he doing that? I don't know, sir. You'd have to ask. Well, him. I what I said to him was, if we're boring you so much, why do you do the show? money <laughs> well okay that's good uh but no i mean he did say that and i just uh, wondered why he said that i i don't know sir I, okay well anyway enjoy with... your show always thank you and but don't be so de did you get a haircut today no sir well you sound you don't know, like you got a haircut okay okay bye Holiday, your turn at WPLP. Oh, this is my night. I've been waiting for this opportunity where you allow this uh, caller to say a lot and just mm -hmm. have their say. And uh, this... Tampa, you're on the air, WPLP. Uh, yeah, well, Bob, I want to tell you about a uh, model of the Taj Mahal I made that's made entirely out of oil and margarine. And uh, I want your opinion on that.
not to continue to buy into our theory. They will know what they need. No, it's a nice concept, but you need a lot of work on your level control. Seminole, you're on the air at WPLP. Yeah, what do you think about Pat Boone taking over PCL, Bob? I didn't know he was going to. Yeah, that's what the news I had on there. I just wonder what your opinion was of Pat Boone there and everything. What is my opinion of Pat Boone? Yes, nice, nice Christian fellow. Well, I would hope that you'd understand that um, it's been a busy day, and I didn't really have time to formulate a, a, an opinion on Pat Boone. Oh, I hope to hear from you in the near future on the PTO network. I mean, your opinion. Well, I, of... I'm not planning on being on the PTO network. No, 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 no. I don't mean that. I mean your opinion of it. In other words, since Farwell's taken over, do you think it'll make it go of it? Um, you know, because they was on the downhill drag. In other words, they wasn't making a go of it when, uh, you know, after Baker left there. They was going in the hole with it. Well, again, I, I haven't... I, I've been tired lately at night, and I've been able to fall asleep I, uh, rather quickly, so I, I haven't spent an awful lot of time laying awake at night thinking about... Oh, I don't expect you to lay awake at night, sir. You don't supposed to take that job home with you. You're supposed to relax when you go home. Oh, I, I try. I try. I find a large tumbler of red wine and whiskey helps. Well, i tell you what, sir. I sure enjoy your program. You're one of a kind, let me tell you. Well, that's, um... I mean, that's a compliment. I, I don't, I don't, I don't mean that in a snobbish way. I mean that's a compliment. Well, I, 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 I enjoy would take it that way. I listen to you every night. That other fellow on there, that Englishman, boy, I can't stomach him at all. Mm -hmm. What do you think of him? I'll get to him right after I formulate an opinion on Pat Boone. I'd appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. You're quite welcome. Bye bye. Bye. Um, you got about 15 seconds. Anything in particular that you wanted to say? Yeah. WFLA is the best station. Okay. And how come you're listening to this one? Well, unfortunately, we just don't have time to find out. You know, when you're in this business, you, you do strange little things. You try to come up with signatures that no one else has and stuff like that. And I, I normally close my show with a couple of words. Tonight, you'll understand why I change and say good riddance. 